Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson two, proportional relationships. Classwork example one, pay by the ounce frozen yogurt. A new self-serve frozen yogurt store opened this summer that sells its yogurt at a price based upon the total weight of the yogurt and its toppings in a dish. Each member of Isabella's family weighed his dish, and this is what they found. Determine if the cost is proportional to the weight. Okay, so the, re the only way we can determine if values are proportional is if the multiple that got us from weight, for instance, in this case, to the cost is the same for every amount. In other words, did they pay the same amount per ounce for each. So what we need to do is we need to find out what we multiply 12.5 by to get 5. So in other words, if I have 12.5 and I multiply it by some variable x, it has to equal 5. Okay. It's really hard to try to figure out a value just by looking at this and saying, well, this number is more than this, so I can't but actually it is division. So if I want to get the unknown by itself, the inverse of division is, or the inverse of multiplication is division. So if I divide this side by 12.5, I get x. And then if I divide 12.5 by this, on this side, I get five divided by 12.5. Okay, and when I did that, here's in the calculator, five divided by 12.5, I got 0.4, let's make it 0.40 because it's money. So it is 40 cents per ounce. So if I get 12 and a half ounces and they're 40 cents per ounce, it will cost me $5. The next one's pretty easy. If I'm going to divide the bottom by the top, because that's what I did here, bottom divided by the top, I'm going to get 4 divided by 10. Well, if I just say that 4 tenths is 0.4. So again, I got 0.40 cents, which is the same. Okay, so now let me just erase this here, get this out of the way, we're done. And I'm going to continue in this fashion with the rest. Now here's five and here's two. We'll put the bottom number divided by the top number, and that is two fifths. Well, if I multiply each by two, if I multiply this by two over two, okay, then I get two times two is four, and five times two is I get the same four tenths. So this one is 0.4. So I'll write that here. This is 40 cents. Because 5 times 40 cents is $2. And then finally, well, 32 divided by 8 is 4. And then the one decimal place, that will also be 0.4 or 40 cents. Okay, so then I'd answer this, then I'd fill this in. It says determine if the cost is proportional to the weight. So now I would say the cost it is proportional. to the weight. Okay, when all these values are the same, everybody paid the same amount per ounce, then it is a proportional cost. Example two, a cooking cheat sheet. In the back of a recipe book, a diagram provides easy conversions to use while cooking. So they start here and they say, well, if you have zero cups of something, you obviously will have no weight, zero ounces. So the cup is empty, if the contents within will be zero. Then when we go to a half a cup, that would be four ounces. All right, so if I take and I want to figure out how do I get from one half to one, well, I have to multiply by two. So if I multiply four times two, did I get eight? The answer is yes. So that is proportional, but it has to continue this way. So what do I do to get one and a half? If I want one half, how many halves do I need to get one and one more half? Well, one is two halves, and one half is another, so I'd be multiplying by three. So if I multiply that by three, then I have to multiply four by three. Four times three is 12. Okay? And then finally, how much do I have to multiply a half by? Oops. Off the board there. How do I multiply a half by one half times four? 
that'd be times four. Four halves is two. So then if I multiply four times four, I get 16. So the ounces are proportional to the cups. Because every time I added a half, I added it. Okay, one half, I added itself to it, I got one. Four plus four is eight. Add four to eight, I get 12. Add a half to one, I got one and a half. So you can look at it as multiplication or repetitive addition, which is multiplication. Okay. Exercise one. During Jose's physical education class today, students visited activity stations. Next to each station was a chart depicting how many calories, on average, would be burned by completing the activity. Calories burned while jumping rope. Time in minutes zero, so if you didn't start, if you aren't jumping rope, if you're just laying down, not moving, zero calories burned. Okay, so let me get up and you jump rope for one minute and it said you burned 11 calories. Well, one plus one or one times two is two, and 11 times two is 22. Okay, and then one times three is three, 11 times three is 33 see what's happening here and then I'd have to multiply 1 times 4 to get 4 and 11 times 4 is 44. Okay. So it says is the number of calories burned proportional to the time? So I'd say yes because actually instead of writing this I'll first bring it in one moment. Okay so yes the time is always multiplied by the same number 11 to find the calories burned. Okay, B, if Jose jumped rope for six and one half minutes, 6.5 minutes, how many calories would he expect to burn? So since we have already determined that this is proportional, okay, by that last problem, is the number proportional? Yes, so since it is proportional, this is our key value. No matter how much, many minutes now, if we know that we burn 11 calories per minute, then I can multiply, per means to multiply. So that means 6.5 times 11, which equals 71.5 calories. Example 3, summer job. Alex spent the summer helping out Al at his family's business. He was hoping to earn enough money to buy a new $220 gaming system by the end of the summer. Halfway through the summer, after working for four weeks, he had earned $112. Alex wonders, if I continue to work and earn money at this rate, will I have enough money to buy the gaming system by the end of the summer? To determine if he will earn enough money, he decided to make a table. He entered his total money earned at the end of week one and his total money earned at the end of week four. A. Work with a partner to answer Alex's question. Okay. So I'm just going to go through this now. So if you work zero weeks, you make zero dollars. Everybody knows that. If you work one week, he said he made $28. So I would say that that is his rate. That's how much he's making per week. So if I multiply one times two, I get two. And if I multiply 28 times two, I get 56. So we can look at this two different ways. I can take 28 times three, or I can just add 28 to 56. And we'll get the same answer. So you just keep adding 28. So 56 plus 28 is 84. And 84 plus 28 is 112. 112 plus 28 is 140. And 140 plus 28 is 168. And 168 plus 28 is 196. And 120 or 28 $196 plus another $28 for the next week, or 8 times 28 is $224. Okay, so the question says, will I have enough money to buy a gaming system by the end of the summer? A new gaming system is $220. I made $224. The answer is yes. He had enough money. Okay, so the answer is yes, Alex will have earned enough money to buy the $220 gaming system by the end of the summer because he will have earned 8 times 28 or $224 for the 8 weeks he worked. The sample table is shown above. Hello. Okay, B, are Alex's total earnings proportional 
the number of weeks you work, and how do you know? Okay, well, they are. We already determined that because it's adding 28 every time, or 1 times 28, 2 times 28, 3 times 28. So there is a um, it's proportional because there is a constant value to which we multiply each one. So let me just bring in the example to explain this better. Okay, Alex's total earnings are proportional to the number of weeks he worked. There exists a constant value 28, which can be multiplied by the number of weeks to determine the corresponding earnings for that week. The table shows an example of a proportional relationship. That is the end of lesson two. Go to your problem set.